Hi there, Zavara from Scrappy Media, and today I have another project with my Scan and Cut. And what we're going to do today is we're going to take this very faint image that I found here in, on, on, on the web, and I'm going to scan it, and I'm going to make the machine recognize this, this image. As you can see, there's not a lot of high contrast with this image. It's just a, gr a gray um, image uh, against a white background so we're going to have to do some tweaks onto the machine so that way it will see it and we'll get a nice little scan so let me turn on the machine I'm going to hit OK and then I'm going to load my scan mat and the reason why I want to use the scan mat and not scan the regular cutting mat is because as you can see here in the cutting mat you can see the lines and it will get picked up and I don't really want that I want it to have a nice clean scan. So I'm going to go ahead and feed this. Okay. So let me bring you closer to the machine because what I want to show you is how to configure this part here so that way you get a nice clean scan. So I'm going to go ahead and place this on this scan mat. right there okay and then let's go up and we're going to have we're going to create some different settings we're going to go ahead and select scan and we're going to scan to cut data and right now I have um, recognition mode let's click on that and it's going to be grayscale I'm not going to use color for this one because it's just it's two two colors is a gray and white so grayscale will work better for us and I'm going to hit OK and then I'm going to hit start and it's going to scan my image so there it you see that it did pick it up so there's three choices we're going to select this choice because I want to cut cut lines on either side of the line so that's why I'm going to select this one and then the next thing I need to do is I need to tell the machine what I want to um, create cut lines for so you're going to bring it closer Let's see okay so I have my image selected and if you notice, there's no cut line. There's no really dark margin because it's not recognizing the image. And that's probably why a lot of people says it's, it's kind of frustrating because it wasn't creating our, our, our cut lines. So what you need to do is you need to have the machine recognize that. So you need to go into this button down here. And then you're going to adjust the color. So if I click on this button here, and I hope you can see that. I'm going to go ahead and bring it to um, all the way to the left. And you'll see how it changes. So it was in the middle, so it was kind of halfway um, point of that gradient bar. So I brought it more to the left, more to the lighter side of the gradient bar, and it's going to recognize a little more of that image, and it's going to create cut lines. But after it's done this, I want to bring it all the way to the left. That is where I'm having more success in recognizing every single cut line in here. And see, you can see it recognize it, but I'm having some issues with it not recognizing. There's some little circles in here, so let me show you. 200%. It didn't pick up, it didn't create cut lines in these areas, see right there? It doesn't have cut lines there or there, it ignored those. If I only want to create an image, so you know, just without those um, individual circles or, or dots inside my doily, I can save this image. And, I'll, and, it, and I can be happy with that, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to make it pick up those areas, those circle areas inside that doily. So let me show you how to do that. You can go ahead and come down one more. 
So we're going to have it re-render the image and let's see if it picks up those little areas that it didn't pick up prior. And if you have a lot of hard time having the machine recognize whatever you're scanning, you can always try color. So I could have changed it to color and then I can change the amount of color that it's going to see and it also that sometimes will it's helpful and will work. So now let's go in and see if it recognized those little areas and you can see it still didn't pick it up. So there are some little white areas. You can, I hope you can see those little dots. It didn't pick it up. It's still a nice little doily, even if it doesn't pick up. I'm happy with that, but I want to show you how to pick up those, um, those little circles. What you have to do is you're going to have to go into Ignore Object Size because it's built in that anything that is smaller than 0.12, it's going to ignore it. It's not going to cut it out because what the machine is trying to do is to prevent cutting, making cut lines on little um, stray marks here, stray marks there that are so small that could be a little blemish with the paper and it doesn't want to pick that up to create cut lines so that's why it's 0.12. But in this case we want to have it pick up those little tiny little dots. So I'm going to bring it to the lowest um, the lowest hyphen width that I can I can select so those little dot lines, it's going to find it now. So if I hit OK, oh, let's go back. We got to go back and process it. So it does, when you change that, it doesn't really um, automatically re render the image. You have to go ahead and go back and um, Hit that gradient bar with the colors, change that, and then it will re-render the image. They should, I mean, that maybe in the next version or update, they may do that. But right now, when you change the ignore object settings, it doesn't re, you know, re-recognize re the, the image. So now let's go and look. See how it picked up? Now it didn't pick up that one. And it didn't pick up some of them, but a lot of them, see it didn't pick up that one. And that one it just did a little small and didn't pick up this little area here. So let's go ahead and bring this down one more time. Let it recognize we recognize it and now you will see that it will pick up every little area in that doily. And because I did bring down the um, the color gradient to white, it's taken a little longer to really run that image through and pick up everything that I want it to pick up. Now let's go back in. And see, it picked up all the little markings. Every single little mark that you see there, it picked that up. So if you're happy with what you have, now we're going to have an issue here. See, it didn't pick up. There's a little issue there. Still didn't pick up that one little blemish. But everything else looks good. And that little blemish is just the side area right here. So one little area right here. I'm going to have to um, use my fingers and pull the little, it's going to create a little tab, a little little tab there so it's going to cut three sides of that circle um, I'm just going to pull that out so I think I'm happy with this so now once you're happy with what you see you're going to hit OK OK and then you're going to save it you can save it to a thumb drive you can save it to the machine I'm in this case I'm going to save it to the machine so ideally you want to either save it to a thumb drive. I need to get a thumb drive and just keep it permanently attached to this machine. But for now I'm going to save it to the machine. And the reason why you don't want to, you don't want a lot of um, memory being used up on the machine with images because it may slow down. And I was reading somewhere in the manual that 
it will slow down if you have a lot of cut files on the machine it will slow it down so it's better to have it on a thumb drive or you can even have it from your computer and just send it through canvas so I'm going so I'm done with that so let's go back to home and it's going to ask it to delete because once you've done your your pattern then um, it doesn't you don't need it anymore so it's going to ask do you want to delete every all the patterns and you're going to say yes okay so let's go ahead and unload my machine and let me bring you out so now I'm going to load my um my sheet here or my mat So let me bring you down to my mat. One thing that you need to do is you really need to use a brayer and really put, put pressure and make sure that it's adhere very well on this mat. There have been some complaints. I've been reading some complaints, reviews, and things like that for this machine that the sticky mat is not like the Cricut. It's not as sticky. And I can say, yeah, it's not as sticky as the Cricut, but it is sticky enough. You just need to bray it. Even with my Cricut, I always braid my, um, my cardstock onto the mat because I wanted to make sure that it adhered very well onto my mat. So I'm going to bring you over. Let me load the machine and you want to use your hands and make sure that it's against the rollers and then load your machine. Okay, this is a little thicker cardstock so I made do a test cut. I'm going to do a test cut at three and a half and then let's go over and select the image. Okay, you're going to click on pattern you're going to go into save data and then let me bring you over you're going to select the uh, machine and then you're going to look for the doily and I've been doing a couple of scans of that I'm going to delete some of those but this is the last scan we did and it's going to retrieve it you're going to hit OK but before we cut it out let's look at it and you want to unify it because right now if I move anything it's gonna move apart so let's go ahead and select this button to unify it and we're gonna select all and when you do that look how, how every little piece is a different cut and it's not grouped together so we're gonna hit OK and what we want to do is we want to group them together okay so this is grouped together and now if I move it notice it's gonna move all together it's not gonna move um, little pieces apart I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK because that's what I want and I'm gonna scan my paper because I'm using um, piece of scrap paper so now you can see that my dolly it fits fits perfectly in this cardstock I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK and I'm gonna go ahead and hit cut or well, actually we need to go and do a test cut so let's go back we're going to add so you're going to hit add test cut we're going to do the square and hit set and then you're going to bring that test cut let's put it in the to on top and um, this machine is going to cut the test cut first then it's going to stop you look and make sure that it did cut where and actually let's put the test cut all the way down here it's gonna stop and then it's gonna then you're gonna be able to continue cutting if you're satisfied with the test cut if you're not satisfied with the test cut cut you can cancel it put another test cut on the cardstock after you do your adjustments and then see if that if you're satisfied with that then you can cut it so I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK and now I'm going to cut and I'm going to hit start. Now let me bring it out. So
So there is my test cut. I'm going to look for the spatula. And let's look and see. And see, it didn't cut all the way through. So what I need to do is readjust. Okay. Let's go over here. Pull this out. We're going to readjust it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and go for going to put it back in the housing okay and then let's go back over here I need to tell it to quit cutting I'm going to go back I'm going to add another test cut and I'm going to bring that one down here Actually, we might be able to put it right there. Okay. Now I'm going to hit OK. Cut. And let's go ahead and see if it cuts it. Okay. Now let's see if this cuts it. No, nope, it still didn't cut it. So I'm going to go ahead and quit my, my cutting. I'm going to do again, go back. I'm going to keep doing this until I get the right depth. And then I'll shall be back. Okay, I'm back. And the last test cut was perfect. I had to put my blade at five. But it did cut it out perfectly, and I inspect the mat, no damage in the mat. So that's basically why you want to do cut, test cuts, because you do not want to have um, your mats get destroyed with all the multiple cuts. You don't want to cut into your mat and, and shorten the life of your mat. So that's why it's good to go half an inch at a time until it, compl it cuts it clean. So, let me go ahead and braid this down. It really works very nice if you braid it down. I'm telling you, it will alleviate a lot of headaches. Even if you don't have a scan, a scan and cut, but you have another die cutter machine, you have to braid, at least that's my opinion, you really need to braid down the paper so that way it sticks very, very good on your paper. My sister does that all the time. She has a, the, the, the um, Cricut Air. And when we do, I mean, it, it cuts wonderful when we do that. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead. Let's go back over here. Since I'm satisfied with the last cut, I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And what it's going to do now, it's going to ignore all those test cuts. And it's just going to cut my doily. Okay, it finished cutting, so now let's go ahead and look and see. I'm going to take it out, and let's go ahead and see how well it cut. Perfect. And you got to be very delicate with this because you don't want to tear it and remember I went ahead and really braid this down so it's really sticking to my mat and then of course you just take these out but look how well that cut. Really cuts very nicely. Look how well that cut. Let me go ahead and clean it up because I'm going to have to go here through all this and really get rid of all those little pieces and let's evaluate our cut in a moment. So here's my doily. So it came out pretty nice. Look at that. Everything you can really see all the nice detail 
So I hope you enjoyed this video in where I can I showed you how to really um, do some co configuration changes on your machine to pick up every little um, little detail on whatever image you're scanning to get a perfect cut. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That will help my channel. If, please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos of this type. And thank you for watching. Bye now.